This problem walkthrough video will illustrate how to apply Johnson's rule to a two-resource sequencing problem. Here's the data for our question. On Monday morning, Baxter Industries has the following jobs waiting for processing in two departments, milling and drilling, in that order. Our requirement is to develop a minimum make-span schedule using Johnson's rule and to draw the correct Gantt chart. Since the process must go through the milling department first, we will use that department to determine the sequencing. The total time it will take to complete all jobs in the milling department is 38 hours, so we can start by drawing a 38-hour timeline. When applying Johnson's rule, the shortest processing time should be found. If this time corresponds to the mill operation, then the job should be sequenced first. If it corresponds to the drill operation, the job should be sequenced last. Then, use the next shortest processing time and work inward from the ends of the sequence until all jobs are scheduled. With our data, job 258 requires the least amount of time in a department. In this case, three hours in the milling department. So we will sequence that job first and start at the beginning, on the left. The next shortest time is job 327 with four hours of drilling required. So, since the smaller processing time relates to the drilling department, we'll schedule that job last and work backward from the end of our 38-hour processing time, or the right side, in the milling department. The next shortest time is five hours of milling required by job 216. So we will schedule that after job 258. The next shortest time is seven hours of milling required by job 617. So we will schedule that one after job 216. Note that if the shorter processing time would be in the drilling department, we would schedule that one before job 327 at the other end of the timeline. The next shortest time is eight hours required again by the milling department, so we'll schedule that after job 617 working from the right. That leaves us with job 519 requiring nine hours of milling, which will have to be scheduled between jobs 462 and 327. Our job sequence then is 258, 216, 617, 462, 519, and 327. Notice how nicely all of our times fit into the 38-hour timeline. Now we'll proceed with scheduling the drilling department. Since all jobs must go through the milling department, the sequencing won't change. We just have to determine how long it will take since the times required in the drilling department are different than in milling. Since our first job, 258, must go through milling first, the earliest the job can start in the drilling department is actually at the beginning of the fourth hour, meaning that the drilling department will be idle for the first three hours while job 258 makes its way through the milling department. Job 258 starts at the beginning of the fourth hour and takes seven hours to complete and will finish at the end of hour 10. Job 216 can start right after 258 at the beginning of the 11th hour and takes 12 hours to complete and will finish at the end of hour 22. Job 617 can start right after 216 at the beginning of the 23rd hour and takes 10 hours to complete and will finish at the end of hour 32. Job 462 can start right after 617 at the beginning of the 33rd hour and take 9 hours to complete and will finish at the end of hour 41. Job 519 can start right after 462 at the beginning of the 42nd hour and take 13 hours to complete and will finish at the end of hour 54. Finally, job 327 can start right after 519 at the beginning of the 55th hour and takes 4 hours to complete and will finish at the end of hour 58. Thus, the make span, which is the time needed to process a given set of jobs, is 58 hours, which is comprised of the 55 hours to complete the drilling for all the jobs, plus the three hours of idle time incurred while waiting for the first job to make its way through the milling department.